The one that we want to talk about is Spurs against Manchester City, as we've briefly mentioned earlier on in the show. And again, full disclosure for this part, for anyone who is watching along, you will see that there is a Tottenham Hotspur picture behind me. Um, but going into that game, John, I might well turn that picture around or change it into one of Manchester City. We're in a weird situation. We spoke about this before the show. Um, and, and especially given that, you know, yesterday on Sunday, you would have had Manchester City fans pulling, pulling for Man United up against their title rivals, Arsenal. Now we're going to have Arsenal fans cheering on Tottenham up against Manchester City on Tuesday night. You'll have probably Tottenham fans. You know, I've, I've not been... Uh, backwards and coming forwards about this. I think I said it on Thursday's show as well about the fact that, yes, I will fully be cheering every Manchester City goal that goes in on uh, Tuesday night because such is the importance of this game. It, it could hand Arsenal a title. Tottenham could put one Arsenal hand on the trophy. And it is such a weird atmosphere going into this game, isn't it, John? Just for, for everyone involved in it. Arsenal fans cheering on Tottenham. Tottenham fans hoping that their team loses. It, it seems very, very strange and odd. Very odd atmosphere, Ned. And I would question, the one thing I would question is, if Liverpool get a result or if Liverpool win at Aston Villa on Monday night, it suddenly means that Spurs have a hell of a lot to play for on Tuesday night. Because a Spurs win, as, as unlikely as that might seem, against Man City, would mean that effectively they would be in the Champions League. Because on the final day, Spurs play Sheffield United and then um, uh, uh, Villa have to go to Crystal Palace, who are playing like Real Madrid. I mean, I, you know, it's obvious. And I, actually, I think it's pretty sad, really, to be honest, that basically the Spurs fans would rather, you know, miss out on the Champions League than, than actually um, see Arsenal win the title. I think that's. I do think that's bizarre. And basically, everyone's got allegiances. And you know, maybe that's sort of you know, maybe that's me being horribly naive. But the Champions League counts for a lot. And basically, it used to be. It, it used to be until this season. Um, and then basically, it used to be a big thing to get into the Champions League in terms of prestige, in terms of where the status of the club was at the start of the season. Postacoglu was like, all bets were off, no chance of the Champions League, you haven't sold your best player. And now they'd, they'd fork up that just to stop Arsenal winning the top. There's no, I, I listen, there's nothing that you can say that basically, you know, could question or kind of understand the mentality of football fans in the moment is there because honestly it's their right it's their it's their choice it's their decision you know uh, someone sent me a clip of, of is it a sort of a spurs band that sort of kind of busks within the stadium basically effectively and they're playing you know on saturday you know this spurs band was playing with all man city fans basically <laughs> during the game i think there was a big misunderstanding wasn't there about the sort of kind of lap of appreciation on Saturday, that wasn't, you know, that was always going to be the case. So it wasn't a kind of, you know, final game sort of kind of because this game is rearranged on Tuesday and then also Saturday allows kids and everyone to sort of kind of stay on, doesn't it, really? So it was always the case. So it wasn't, you know, it wasn't seen as their final day. But honestly, I, I, I do find it, I do find it bizarre. And clearly there are, you know, for people not living in London, they might not understand that basically, you know, the sort of kind of animosity between Tottenham Arsenal or a Tottenham Chelsea, Tottenham rivalry, hatred with Chelsea is far greater than Arsenal's rivalry with Chelsea. Arsenal and West Ham, well, it seems quite like each other, to be honest. And then basically, you know, you can't, you, you know, you can't, there's no rhyme or reason for London rivalries, are there, basically? And yet Tottenham absolutely despise West Ham and vice versa, you know. So it's it's really, it, you know, it's strange. But the one thing is, it's pure hatred between Arsenal and Tottenham. Am I, am I particularly surprised that, you know, Spurs would rather forego, you know, Champions League football than see Arsenal win the title? Not really, but I do think it's utter, I think it's bizarre because... In the years of Wenger, when it was like for 10 years, it felt like when Arsenal were desperate to get into the Champions League to pay the pay the rent, basically. I mean, I, I, I actually think that they would have prioritised getting into the Champions League as fans and as players than, than basically, you know. But, you know, I guess it's difficult to kind of predict and difficult to understand because, you know, Spurs... 
you know it was i mean the, the, the title race in 2016 was was a funny one wasn't it because basically arsenal fans celebrated so much when basically they ousted spurs from second you know on the final day of the season and that shows you the kind of animosity between the fans so don't ever ever tell fans in my view my experience basically don't ever tell fans what to think what to support what to say and what to do on you know because they make up their own minds because they're passionate about it enough already but on tuesday night yeah it'll be it'll be a strange scenario if spurs have still got a big chance of getting into the champions league to see them forego that just so that they could see city win don't worry i'm praying for an aston villa victory tonight as well just to just to remove any uh, issues or you know kind of conflicts that might occur and and you know, kind of fully allow me to to you know play oasis throughout the day on tuesday and kind of really build up to it and you know channel my inner uh noel gallagher as well for it for andy though um looking at manchester city and the importance of this game and yes they still have another game to come at the weekend but at home to west ham but for me it kind of feels like that this game has almost a cup final feel to it that Victory in this will put Manchester City in pole position going into the final day. Does the fact that they have been so you know, dominant in cup competitions under Pep Guardiola in recent years as well, is, is that something then that looking at this game and kind of almost, you know, not so much taking it as a one-off, but because it does have that kind of win or bust feel to it, much like a cup final, is that something that could help Manchester City in it, the fact that they have been so, uh, so successful in the cups under Pep? Yeah, and, and essentially it's another big must-win game and they are very, very accustomed to big must-win games. They didn't get across the line against Real Madrid, of course, this season. So, you know, they haven't got a flawless record in these type of games and they, they haven't got, you know, the best record um, at Spurs, obviously. We, we all know that. Um, so, you know, it could be set up. And, and also, I do think, you know, I don't underestimate the fact that City... During the title race, they are relentless. They do win every game. But during the title race, normally, apart from this weekend, actually, as it happens, you know, they, they've they had to respond to Arsenal. They've got to respond again tomorrow. And I don't care what anyone says. First of all, quickly about... I, I, I agree with everything that, that Crossy said then, but but let's get one thing straight. You know, the, the players are... I, 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 the players won't make any difference to the players whether the fans want them to win or not. You know, the players will go out there and they'll try and win the game. I do think as well, as you probably know, when the fans are actually in the stadium... They'll be cheering their team on. Um, and Boston Cogler will want to win. Although I think he is quite friendly with Pep, isn't he? But anyway, but he will want to win. Um, Pep has always given a big up. But anyway, he, he'll want to win. It's not going to affect the players. The players will are playing against Man City. They'll be trying their hardest to win that game. So let's get that one right. I think Arteta referenced yesterday, um, a bit gratuitously, but the honesty and integrity of the league. And that's why, for example, you just mentioned, Ned, about... OK, it feels like a good final. They've got, you know, but don't, you know, they've got West Ham at home on on um, on Sunday. That's not a formality. It seems like it is, but it's not a formality. We thought it was a formality when they played Villa at home a couple of seasons ago. It turned out not to be. They, they, were, they were not fortunate, but very dramatic way they got across the line. Everton and Arsenal aren't going to just, like, you know, sit back and get beaten by, by Arsenal, you know, willingly. They haven't conceded the goals. So don't forget... It can go down to the wire. But the reason why you have to fancy City tomorrow night is not necessarily because they're used to this sort of game, not because they've got that experience, but basically they're just playing ever so well. You know, they're playing ever so well. They've got pretty much a full squad to choose from. He's got options galore. Um, they have got that, you know, steely-eyed sort of determination about them now. I think even particularly since they went out of the Champions League has probably redoubled their determination to set this record equaling four Premier Leagues on the spin. Um, so that's why you would fancy them tomorrow night. It's not because Spurs fans might want, um, don't want Arsenal to win a title. Not because, you know, they can get off for this one. But I just think because at the moment, they're playing really well. They're playing really well. And, you know, that's why you'd ha you, you'd fancy them to win tomorrow night. I, I was just going to raise one thing, which I know I kind of bored Dunny with already, really. But... The integ <laughs> he rolls his eyes, but basically, it's these it's these rearranged fixtures that, that, that base, I think raise an issue for the Premier League and particularly the integrity of the competition, and it's something that actually American sport looks at and we don't. So the Premier League, their default position is when they rearrange games, 
they take each game they take the you, you know basically the, the oldest game first so basically when um city had an outstanding game uh with brighton um at the time they also had an outstanding game with spurs so their default position was brighton's was the longest outstanding so they rearranged that first but what it does mean is that for example if villa do win um tonight it leaves spurs with very little to play for in which in, in a fixture which a few weeks ago would have been a massive you know test for city because spurs had a lot to play for so it does raise an issue about integrity and about integrity of the fixture list and basically do you need to have a little look at rearranging fixtures when there's still you know a test in the title race because man city are going for the title and basically every game should count well tomorrow night you make a big argument that actually if villa win tonight then it won't count for a lot really because basically you know spurs won't have anything to play for basically so it's question to integrity but i mean look i i, I think city come what may will win on tuesday night because they are the best team i think they're the best team i think our football always evolves and i think football raises standards each season that's why it's impossible to compare teams of the past but one thing is very clear i think pep guardiola has built the best team uh, in the premier league era i think that if they win the fourth title in a row then they'll absolutely have deserved it no matter which you know way the fixtures fall i guess and, and basically who can stop them now and i just think they've been wonderful we should appreciate them the standard of football the way they play their their tactics their approach magnificent and i do think whatever happens you know at the end of the season whoever wins it will deserve it but make no mistake about it arsenal deserve ma massive credit for pushing the greatest team of the premier league era all the way and Mikel arteta the job that he's done has been magnificent but honestly guardiola what he's done at city to to raise standards to produce such scintillating thrilling football year in year out is just magnificent